Hi everyone, it's Michelle Lightworker here and welcome to Enlightened Conversations. I have a beautiful, lovely soul joining me today who I treasure what she does walking on this planet. Um, every breath that she takes, she's got the passion of a warrior and um, is out there <laughs> advocating and being the voice at the moment for so many who are still finding their voice. And so I'd like to formally introduce to you Janet Slight Leach. Janet, uh, sorry, Jane, sorry. Jane. Janet. <laughs> it's funny, oh, I, get Janet. I think I'm going to change my name because I get called Janet so often. <laughs> Jane, Jane is the founder of the Life Two project and inspiring events which are amazing and I've been to them and new conscious view and Jane is on a mission to bust the myth of the victim I love that and mm -hmm. the strength tenacity dedication that drive on the drive that women who have left abusive relationships undoubtedly share so with her mantra Heal, empower, educate, connect. Women are finding the balance and learning that they have a beautiful energy that they can use to support and own each other's healing and, and the journey, to support that journey for each other, which is incredible. I love the community spirit there, Jane. I love that. Yeah, yeah, but that's really important. Yeah. Based on uh, Jane's own experiences and gathered knowledge and research, and she's a trained retreat facilitator, and her determination to provide effective solutions, the Life Two retreats are now well on their way for women for recovery from the, their situations from domestic violence. And also, she's done, goodness me, God knows, so many interviews, ABC, she's done work for. You know, Soul TV, she's done so many different things on her path to help her to really step into her power and her advocacy. And I've, I've been privileged to watch a small part of that journey. And I, I'm just so I'm just so in awe of you and I love the work you're doing. And, and welcome to be here today, Jane. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. It's awesome. And I love what you're doing too with, um, I've only watched a small portion of it, but what I've seen so far, your style and your energy is just is fabulous and I love it. I'm really happy to be part of it. Thank you yeah. so much. Yes. <laughs> it's like, you know, leading the revolutions of, of consciousness and enlightenment, um, having yeah. a better, better job. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah. it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool to be part of that. It's cool to support each other too um, in, our, in our journeys because, you know, the work that you're doing, it's, it's incredible. Hats off, sweetheart. I just love, mm. love, love, love that you're creating a space, a safe space for women to grow, to heal, to support each other, to connect. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it, it very much all came out of my own experience of being so isolated as well. Um, yes, and, yes. you know, throughout the years, I've, I've connected with different organisations who are doing some fantastic work, don't get me wrong, you know, and it's really, really needed. Um, but they are so limited. And you and I know the work that's really um, effective and really important is, you know, tapping into your own soul, your spirit, your, um, your own drive, your values, um, and, and your connectedness. And, and one of the unfortunate things around, you know, abuse, any type of abuse or trauma is you lose that sense of connection, not only with others, but with yourself, you know, first and foremost, you disconnect from yourself. So, and I very much was in that place. And in reflection, I found when I came back to myself, that was when I became my most powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And and I and I know that the work that you're doing is really open-minded, and it's really encouraging that holistic approach. It's really helping mm. women to learn how to do that, like how to how to find their way of doing that, which I love. Jane, you know, because yeah, we, yeah. All, we all find, find it a different there's, way. There's, no, there's not a prescription for it. There's no one kind of size fits all kind of, you know, therapy or way of doing things. It's, um, I, I try to kind of um, be as holistic as possible, 
knowing what worked for me and that's where my starting point was but you know through the work that I've done and all the connections that I've made and the different people that I've worked with you know we, we can we can bring in so many alternatives for people to just find their own path whatever that might be it might be traditional psychology medicine or whatever it might be something else you know in in our field there are so many different options and which I love um, but mainstream they're, they're, they tend to put people in boxes and their options are so limited so I wanted to open that up yeah yeah Take really it creating something so beautiful and so alive it's it's mm. I can feel it <laughs> It's like living, breathing, growing, let it, letting it do its thing. I, I, yes, I love it that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's evolving. And, you know, when I, I started this five years ago, it was very different in my head to what it has grown into now, you know. And I think as facilitators, practitioners, or, you know, the people doing the work that we do, we have to be very open-minded as to how things are going to work and how they're going to end up looking it's not going to stay the same as it is now. It's going to be changing forever. And that's just the nature of life, isn't it? Yeah. And that's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I, Cause yeah. I know that like, when we were on Soul TV and I love that you were a change facilitator. What yeah. a freaking great title. Like, you know, <laughs> like, hello. Um, that is exactly what we all need to kind of accept on this journey that, 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 that there yeah, is, yeah. you know, you, can, you don't really, you know, I mean, you don't really reach a point where you're just like, oh, I've made it. It's like, I think if you reach a point where you think, I've made it, there's something you need to work on so far as the humility and your, do you know what I mean? Like this, this totally. stuff there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come to terms. Well, I mean, you know, the very nature of change is it's, it's constant. You know, the only constant in life is change. That's what they say, isn't it? So, you know, we're constantly evolving. We're all... You know, hair's growing, nails are growing, cells are regenerating. I've covered all of this so many times in, you know, very, <laughs> various different interviews and um, media things and um, talks and whatnot. But it, it remains at the core, you know. If you expect to be a certain way constantly all the time and you don't allow yourself the flexibility for new things to come in, you're going to stagnate and it's going to get, pretty painful pretty quickly yeah yeah I think that's the gift of pain and I think you know um if we all realized that pain was actually helping us to kind of maybe like you know exercise some other muscles that would be that would be mm. awesome to have, yeah, yeah. have that realization a bit quicker um yeah. rather than to let the pain get to the point where it's unbearable that kind of stuff but exactly. um, you know the thing yeah. I was actually thinking this morning um you know, that came through before our talk, I, I was called to, to do a bit of prepping and, 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 to, and to really tune into what, like, messages wanted to come through from, for this. And the thing that was really strong was this perception that often, you know, like, in, in a situation of domestic violence, when I, I've been there too, when you're in that situation and you've got that low self-esteem, um, going on and 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 you're feeling like you, you literally are feeling like i i I've, on some level even if it's unconscious because you're tolerating it i deserve this um yeah. and, and i think i'm not worth any more than this yeah i think that the, the thing that's really come in about this um is that hmm, how do i put this is that we have this this perception that that on some level vibrationally um internally we're vibrating that i deserve this so we've attracted it to ourselves so we're not a victim because on some level we've chosen that we've chosen to attract that to learn the lesson to step into a different energy mm. so the gift of realizing you're not a victim is the fact that you may have chosen it but you can then choose something else exactly right yeah, yeah, and the power of choice is there for everybody. You know, but unfortunately, we live in a society and a paradigm where we're very much drip-fed what we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to behave, how we're supposed to think. We have certain roles, um, and we choose not to question that a lot of the time. Everything's a choice, you know. And that's one of the main things that we, we do, you know, teach in the retreats is that you can make different choices. You have the power. It only takes a decision. Um, 
but it, it, it you know it, it's based in self-awareness as well you've got to have a little mindfulness bring yourself to some self-awareness uh check into what's going on in your body check into what reactions are going on and um and start to question those you know going to why do I behave in a certain way when this trigger happens? What's going on, you know, in my thought processes, in my belief systems, in my mindset? Um, uh, and why do I follow this pattern over and over again? You know, um, questions and choices and making a different decision is, is really the basis of, of any healing process. Yeah, absolutely. It's so powerful, isn't it? Owning mm. our choices. Man, that is so powerful. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Because, you know, you could say, oh, I chose this. See, I deserve it. You know, like you can get into that victim thinking because that's the victim will say that. Oh, yes, yeah, um, well, I chose it, so I deserve it, right? Yeah, and yeah. I've heard yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to sit here and, and suffer and be the martyr and, um, you know, be the victim and be the, the, the person who deserves pity. Um, <laughs> That's, that's probably the most dissimilar. I've not been there, you know, I've done all of that. Um, okay. I see that whole process as a learning experience. It's a journey. Um, it is an experience. And I talk about going through that, that state of victimhood as, as being an experience. It's not, people take it on as a label. It's not a personality trait. It's not something that you are. It's something that you're moving through. Yeah. yeah, I love that. That's so good because then it's not like you're judging the fact that you were a victim because then you stay in victim, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If you take oh, it on as something that you are, I am a victim, your cells will take that on and that'll become trapped in your body and you become the embodiment of victim and that comes out in behaviour and attitudes and language and the whole works. Um, if you see it as, and it, you know, it, it, it's, it's a, it's a process to actually change your mindset around this stuff. Um, but yeah, see yourself as feeling like a victim. That's perfectly fine. Cause we all feel like a victim. Sometimes if shit happens, you know, stuff goes on. Um, we can all go there and that's fine. As long as you realize that it is just a feeling and feelings are transient, your emotions are transient. You can come through it as quickly or as slowly as you choose to. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, I love what you're saying. It's an experience and to let yourself um, acknowledge that there is a part of you that feels like you're a victim because if you ignore them, it's mm -hmm. like you're re you're reabandoning yourself. So, exactly. you know. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. Well, if, some, if someone robs, burgles your house, for instance, you're going to go straight there. You're not going to go straight into oh, the poor person needs this stuff more than I do, therefore I'm going to sit in compassion. No, you immediately go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say it for you. What the fuck? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on the show. but. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no holes bad on this show. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? We, we have, you know, we have our reactions. We have our stuff that goes on for us and it's all part of us and you know don't condemn yourself for having certain reactions but just understand that it's not a permanent thing and it's not part of your personality yeah but I think I think it's really awesome that we're talking about this because you know there's so much empowerment in reclaiming that part of ourselves that does get pissed off and feel like a victim there's a lot of power in building that bridge because hmm. They're the part of us that feels abandoned in the first place. So if they feel abandoned in the first place, then reconnecting with them and, and validating them and go, hey, honey, yep, I get it. You're pissed off. Uh, you, you know, you just had your car broken into. You have, you have a right to feel that way. And then you're validating. Yeah. And, and it's developing that emotional I think we just have to embrace all parts of ourselves more than we do. You know, as women in particular, we are told to be nice. We're told to not question, um, to not have too strong an opinion, uh, to not challenge the status quo. We're very much, you know, even in this day and age, we're very much suppressed. Um, you know, I think... Um, 
yeah all of that really frustrates me because we don't we're not allowed to embrace all of those parts of ourselves that get enraged that get angry that become incensed at the injustice that you know a lot of us face in the world you know the um for instance all of the uh anti-abortion um and women's rights campaigns that are going on donald trump taking away stripping stripping women of their rights to to make choices about their own body you know we need to have a sense of outrage about this and we need to allow ourselves to to let that out because we're so used to suppressing and we're destroying ourselves from the inside a lot of the time by keeping that stuff in suppressing it holding it down you know we're denying a part of ourselves that really needs to be let loose sometimes mm. and it's an interesting thing it's, it's, it's like you know um society i guess um doesn't realize what's not working well it, even as as individuals we, we don't realize, like, we're just talking about pain. Like, it's a great mm. motivator. You know, mm. We don't realize what's work, what not working until we get sick or we feel pain or something like that. And yeah. so if there's, a, you know, if there's a thorn in the side of society and it's going out, then obviously we need to hear it so that mm. we can understand that, that, that there's something not quite right or something not working. I think that, you know, that there, there is um, a time and a place for... Um, verbal expression around what we feel we need to stand for um, yeah. because if we don't hear it then we and we don't see it then how do we know that there needs to something needs to give some change needs to happen um, yeah yeah deep and we're just and we're just going along going <laughs> and then putting our vote in for anyone other than someone that put us off but you know yeah. and we the end result is that we're not happy but then we have to see what then unfolds from that to learn what we do want. And, yeah. and so that's all part of it, isn't it? It comes down to that question, doesn't it? You know, if you ask a woman, what do you want from life? She's not generally, you know, the ma majority of, of people, women, are not going to be able to tell you very much about what they want from life. There might be, you know, oh, I want a really nice house, I want a great relationship. But on that soul level, they can't tell you. Mm -hmm. Tell it if you ask them what they don't want, yeah. they can reel off a whole long list of traumas that they probably had in their life, um, knowing exactly what it is that they don't want, how they don't want to feel. But asking someone how they do want to feel, how they do want to experience life is a much tougher question. And um, it's, not, it's not a question that is, is delved into or pondered too much i don't think it's that's been my experience from working with women at least yeah and you know like i'm seeing this this little little like fine line right where we we, we come to a point where we're dissatisfied mm. and, we, and then we say to ourselves well i don't like that and then and then instead of like crossing the line into um handing our power over to some system or someone that might be um standing for what we don't want we need to then find a way that we claim and take mm. action for what we do want mm. that's really where the empowerment lies isn't it in that it space is. it is yeah yeah total forward focus you know um because if you're working from what you don't want you're very very focused in the past you're focused in the negative um and we all know, you know, about the laws of attraction, where you, where you put your focus in. Even if you are focusing from a place of a negative experience but focusing on the opposite or trying to focus on the opposite, that it, you're still based in that experience of the, that negative thing that's happened. So your subconscious mind is literally hanging on to that. Um, and your whole motivation is negatively geared so the, the law of attraction can't possibly work because it's cancelling itself out constantly. Yeah, exactly. So we need to start tapping into um, really what do we, what do we want to experience? What do we love? You know, I've recently started getting back into, I've, I've spent a lot of years just 
working constantly with, with, you know, very little else going on in my life. But I've recently started to kind of really focus on, all right, what lights me up these days? You know, what, what, what do I enjoy? <laughs> and I've started getting back into music and going to gigs and concerts. And, oh, my God, it's, it's just opened me up. Like my sense of joy has come back. It's been missing for a long time. There's actually a, there's actually a word for the loss of the sense of joy in life. And I can't remember exactly what it is, but um, most people, well, I'd say probably all people who experience some kind of trauma, specifically domestic violence, uh, that interrelationship trauma, cannot tap into a sense of joy anymore. It's a physical phenomenon. Um, and I find that really, really sad. That's probably one of the saddest parts of the work that I do because when I work with people, I don't buy into any of the story. You know, I don't, I don't need to engage in any of that. I'm very much focused on where they're going to be at the end of the work that we do. Well, it's not the end. It's going to be ongoing. But, you know, when we've done uh, the processes that we do, um, but, yeah, it takes a while to get that sense of joy to, to start coming back. Yeah. And I, I find that. It's interesting. Yeah, I, um, I can understand where that comes from too because, like, a lot of the time um, when we're in those DV situations, we're really enmeshed, right? And mm. because of that enmeshment, it's not really connected in a healthy way. So we lose trust with ourselves yeah, totally. Boundaries, and mm. then we end up. I find that what happens is we end up walling off our heart chakra, our heart space, yes. mm. and we don't know how to. We don't know how to be, um, have a, have a healthy sense of connectedness, and so often that's the first thing to go. Mm. Before, well, the last thing to go before we leave, because you know, we're yeah, yeah. exposed. So we have a bit of a hardness around there, and then. It's harder for us, I think, to because um, then it's like we, we, we're more like living from the head up because we've got to make these rational decisions. And then yeah, yes. the thaw out and like the Chinese yes. would say, your, your heart centre is your joy centre. And yes. so it takes a while to tap back in in, a, in a way that feels uh, safe. Mm. So, you know, it makes totally make sense. It's like the, you know, the end of the journey and, and, and there's yes. ways to Saying, like to help them heal, open up and find mm. reconnect themselves and things like that. And music, I mean, it's just, I mean, it sounds so obvious, but it's like, not, not so. Like there are things that you put away in, in the closet because yeah. you realise it and, and it's pushed away and then you yes. like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, so many women have, so, you know, sort of, you know, during the courses of conversations have related to me, you know, things that they used to do that they used to love that, you know, they, they've, they've just let it go. It's slid away from them and they, they just can't seem to grasp onto it anymore. And, and you're right, you know, we close down that heart center and it's a self protection mechanism. Um, there's a lot you can do to actually start to open that up, but um, it, yeah, it's, 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 part that I find you know there's all the violence and, and whatnot and, and all of that horror but that's the saddest part for me yes is not being able to really freely express yourself in joy yes yes because you know when you look at a baby they're just we're giggling and you know free and and it's like really it is isn't it it's like that revisit to the to the um What's the word? The not, not the naivety, but the the pureness, the the yeah. Joy, you know what I'm talking about? Don't I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that that uninhibited kind of ability to to express yourself. You know, without the fear of um, you know being ridiculed or repercussions or any of that. You know, that sense of just carefreeness. Yes. And that's such a gift, that's such mm. a gift to realise that that can come. And I think that's inspiring, sweetheart, like I really do, because um, often we're so caught up in the drama that we don't mm -hmm. realise that the bits of we've 
perhaps, um, not that a lost, I'd say forgotten is a better word because they're never really lost. They're still there. Yeah, that's um, right. They're all there. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and there's so much joy actually in anticipating those to come alive again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's hope in that. And I, I, I really want to encourage anyone who's in a situation where they feel that perhaps that's just too far away, just to say, look, to say this is that you, 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 when you start to make these connections with yourself, the, the reality is we're infinite beings and we absolutely don't know how much we're capable of at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we're capable of so much more than we could ever imagine. So you don't have to worry about that. All yeah. you need to do is just take those steps one after the other and just, yeah. just trust. Just trust the exactly. process. Yeah. And it is a day by day, step by step thing. And it's very much, um, you know, centered in self observation and awareness, mindfulness, um, and al just allowing yourself to be how you need to be in any one given moment. You know, it's give yourself permission to cry if you need to, to go for a run if you need to, to scream from the rooftops if you need to. You know, there, there's lots of different ways that people can express you know how they're feeling you know catch up with a friend or just talk on the phone talk to yourself in the mirror if that's what you need to do you know express I, yourself I, yeah I have, I'm, I, I have enjoyed screaming into a pillow many yeah. times just yeah letting people know, you know you don't have to worry about what anyone thinks you mm. can just Scream, scream underwater. I scream, I, I've done a lot of screaming underwater as well. It's been good. Yeah, wow, in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. yeah or, in, or in the pool. No one can hear Yeah, that. yeah. You know what? It's, it, it's, it's, I, I, I've done a little bit of path life regression stuff, you know, in, in, in the past. I know what's kind of, I know the types of things that have happened to me as a female through the ages. Um, and we are all carrying, you know, aspects of that. If you understand anything to do with epigenetics, um, you know, we're carrying emotional experiences from our ancestors that we need to also clear and be aware of as well, that, that part of our DNA and our behavioral patterns. Um, so even if, you know, you don't even have a sense of why you're feeling what you're feeling, no matter what experiences you've had, whether it's, you know, through trauma or whether it's just, you know, everyday life that, that goes on accept that that is what you're feeling don't try to question it just express it however best way you feel you're able to uh, and allow it you know um and it's mm. because every time we do that we're giving ourselves permission to be yeah that's, you know, that's 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 reclaiming ourselves that's that's the opposite of abandoning ourselves that's the opposite yeah. of i'm not worthy that's the opposite of uh, yeah. I deserve this and it's really yeah. allowing us to be present and I think that there's so much healing in that it's ridiculous mm. um, just the turning up and allowing ourselves to be where we are it's, yeah. it's so awesome, it's so awesome. Mm. Mm. I think um, I question the word deserving sometimes, you know, as well, and this has just kind of just popped into my head as a bit of a random thing, so I haven't really thought this through probably as much as I probably could, but the word deserving, uh, I, I sometimes question it because I think we all have an innate sense of um, having the right to just be. Mm -hmm. Whether we, we don't deserve anything i don't think because that kind of gives a sense of we've earned something we're not not necessarily have earned anything you know um but we all we all have the right to just be mm. and be, and do however we want to we, however we need to do to the best of our ability you know removing ill intent or negative negative intent we you know do no harm as long as everyone has the intent of do no harm be for goodness sake you know you don't it's it's not a case of deserving because it's like um you put in a scale on it then almost you know and it, yes it's, we are enough we'll stop we are yeah enough. everybody is you know um that just turns a random thought but just popped in then yeah it's so true there the moment. yeah it's like yeah no one's not worthy so you mm. know um, why do we say we deserve 
things sometimes. It's, 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 yeah. Maybe, yeah. Wow. Maybe we it's come from a place of neut neutrality and everybody's equal and everybody's the same. You know, people, there are people in this world that harm and hurt. We know this. Um, and they're the opposite end of the scales. We have our altruistic people who, you know, who are the healers and, and the communicators and the collaborators. Um, a, sense of, uh, a sense of worthiness and deserving, I don't think, needs to come into it if we all accept that we all are on the same playing field. We yeah. do different things that cause different outcomes. Yeah, one balances the other. We've got just as many people doing harm as we have people healing. You know, there's, there's this there is a balance in the world. We get to see more of the hate and the more of the trauma and more of the violence that's going on because that's what's reported and that's the, that's the drama because we're attracted to the drama. But there's just as much of the, you know, the, the healing work and the, um, the collaborative work and the um, innovation work going on to solve problems in the world. It's all happening. Yeah, agreed. We get bought into, because, because of media and that type of attention, we, we buy into the other side of it, you know, the drama side of it, far too often. Yeah. Do you, I, I've got this thing that really bugs me um, that I'm going to, I feel like I want to say out loud, and, and it's, it's about, um, I guess, no, I see it. We have a social responsibility to speak to each other in, in, in ways that are worthy, that, mm. that, we all, that we all feel that we all feel we deserve respect. Um, and when I see people in high positions, like the government um, politicians and things, speaking to each other in a way that I wouldn't accept in my own home to be spoken yeah. to. <clears throat> Like there's a lack of social responsibility in the way yeah, that communications absolutely. take place, mm. and, al and almost condoning domestic violence, but mm -hmm. of the way one is expressing and denigrating the other person. And I feel like it's unacceptable. And I feel it is like unacceptable. It's completely unacceptable. These people are our role models, <laughs> I'd say that, you know, um, with an animated sense of um, <laughs> fun. Um, we don't, I don't see any of the major politicians being anything like what we need in leaders. Yeah. Um, there are ones that are out there that are doing some great work, um, very much behind the scenes most of the time. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> The, the the big guys, the ones in control, are not worthy of my respect in any way, shape or form. Um, I try to not even watch the news. I don't watch any political debates because it makes me really angry. Um, we all have an idea of what should and shouldn't be happening in this world. Um, I truly hold in my heart that everything that's happening is happening for this reason that it is going to crumble that people are getting to a level of awareness now and a level of discontent um, that firstly they're going to start to question. Second, they're going to start to become a little bit more active and start to, you know, be more involved. Uh, and thirdly, you know, a certain amount of people, a certain core group of people are actually taking strong action. Um, so it's all happening i think from my kind of limited world perspective as it needs to be happening um yeah we are on a point of big, we are on a point of huge change so you know the establishment is not going to go down without a kicking and screaming match um you know any type of narcissistic person organization um government body that type of you know authoritarian entity at the first sign of losing control they they become violent whether in their language in their actions or you know their attitude they they try to hold on to that power by whatever means that they can i experienced that in past relationship um 
when the major when when you know I as, as an individual became more empowered the control came became more intense um, and it we're seeing the same now you know as the people are becoming more aware and more empowered the control is going to become more intense we're going to see martial law we're going to see all sorts of things coming in you know control with military that type of thing it will pass it's a transient experience like I keep saying we're experiencing something that's never happened on the planet before, I think, you know, and it, it comes down to individual level and it steps right up to country global level, you know? Yeah. You can look at it from a higher perspective. Absolutely. Mm. You know, it's a, funny, it's a funny thing. Like we have this, these, these laws um, in Australia anyway, around, you know, well, we, we have these slogans even saying one punch can kill, you know, mm. and we have, have, we have things about like you know physical violence being against the law you can't physically assault someone and I yes. know we have I know we have apprehensive violent orders which are like AV, we call them AVOs used to be called DVOs for domestic violence orders and we have AVOs now against people harassing and doing all those things out there so I kind of think to myself when I when I reflect on this I think to myself that unless we um, we have some, some kind of level of awareness at that level of the people that are role modelling and the, the, the fact that, you know what, that that's actually highly abusive because the way you're talking to that person and shaming them is yeah. actually, uh, that is actually filtering through to all of us and mm. that's making us all feel good. And it's actually well, great. It's, it's, it's setting an example that it becomes acceptable for people to you know, accept that kind of behavior. It, it becomes normal for people to accept that kind of behavior. And, you know, and, and we, know, we all know the scenarios with, you know, we're bombarded with, with television, and, you know, all of the media, the news outlets, the internet. We're being, we're being molded into thinking and accepting the, a certain way. Um, I think more and more people are actually challenging that now, which is which is encouraging, which is really refreshing, and um, um, yeah, makes me very very happy. Being a little rebel at heart that I am, um, <laughs> um, yeah. But you know, it's all a process. It, I don't like to boil it. I don't like to boil the human experience down to you know something that seems so clinical. But we all are on our own journeys. We all are having our own experiences. Um, and if we keep in mind at the end of the day that that's exactly what it is and we're just, we're just moving through something, it, it, you can take comfort in that. No matter what's going on out there, you know that there's something else at the, at the end of it, you know. There's going to be an outcome. There's going to be something, something can I, better. Can I, just, can I share something here about that? Because... We talk about the fact that you get to a certain point where you're sick and tired of something, you know, whether it's a physical thing or this emotional thing in domestic violence situations, and you get to that point and you go, you know what, I'm sick of it. Yeah. And then we talk about, and then we talk about focusing on the other people, the person doing it and blah, 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 and blaming them, pointing the finger and basically shooting all the energy out of our thing that, that could be empowering us. For me, what I'm doing, like this show, is all part of, me saying, well, I, I believe, actually, I believe in the solution. Yeah. I believe that, I believe there is a solution. I believe yep. that we, we need to role model a solution. And there's a lot of joy in that. Seriously, a lot of joy. Like, there's so what? much joy in that. Because, like, it's actually very, really yeah. Good. It's very At freeing, I find. Hmm. Instead, I'm doing this. I mean, hmm. we're talking about them, obviously, an important part of it, but knowing oh cool i'm doing my bit i think there's yes. a lot of coolness in that. there's a lot of meaning there's a lot of hope there's a lot of it lifts like you know those depressive feelings people go oh, this is hopeless you know oh you know i mean yes. I'm, not, I'm not i'm not hearing you say that too because i feel like even though you said it's a process that has to get there even that's positive because something has to give before it gives you know yeah, yeah. so it's like yeah i call it the point of change um, and I've talked about this quite extensively. Um, it's, it's when someone gets to a point in their life 
where staying the same is more painful than the fear of change, the fear of the future, the fear of the unknown. They're not willing to stay where they are any longer despite being so afraid of what might be in the future. All of their fears and doubts around that, you know, fear of um, can I cope, will I be able to support myself, and I'm talking specifically around domestic violence now, you know, will I be able to support my kids, will I be able to, you know, all of that practical stuff that comes in. The fear of not coping with all of that becomes less than the fear of staying the same. That's the point of change and that's unfortunately where a lot of people need to get to to spur them into action, whatever that action might be. Yeah, and like, and one of those fears might be fear of death because I might have had three yeah. there a lot. Yeah, yeah, so totally. face, It's kind of, I know this is, it might sound a bit bizarre for, for people putting it this way, but it's almost like, thank God you threatened to kill me because I, uh -huh. I, I actually had to, I actually had to focus mm -hmm. on my fear of death in order yeah. to strengthen myself to live. Yeah, and, and yeah. So, you know, there's that, so that, I, I think this way about terrorism, I think, thank God you're threatening death anywhere randomly because mm. I'm in a freaking life. And guess what? No fear of death. No fear of death is going to stop me from living my life right now. How liberating yeah. is that? And so yeah. we can turn, in, yeah, we can turn any situation into a really liberating yeah, yeah. one if we let ourselves. But yeah. Yeah, it does yeah. get... It gets easier though, doesn't it, Jane? It's like it does yeah. get easier. It's it's a daunting thing at first, and you just simply have to hand over your faith to you know to know that you know things are going to work out for the best. Um, and that that can be a hard thing to do. You've also got to kind of take into consideration people's response to trauma and and stress as well. So you know when you look at the fight and flight response, people often don't take into consideration the freeze response. Um, that is really common, and that is why you know you get the question, why didn't you leave? Um, mm -hmm. It's often people, women going into that freeze response, freeze response and simply not being able to take any action at all. It's like an animal will play dead when it's under threat. I love that because that yeah. makes me feel, it's almost like, oh, I get this vision that society, when they're watching stuff played out that's really dysfunctional, they're like in some kind of, yeah, like dead zone. They don't, mm -hmm. They're not, they they're frozen. It's like they're even literally yeah, frozen. They don't yeah. Know it, they don't even know yeah. It. Like it's not. It's not known to you, is it? No. You go. You go completely blank. You lose memory. You lose brain function. You your your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system shut down. So your digestion stops. You. you you know, there's so many physical reactions that go on in the body when someone is under that kind of stress. Um, and, and I teach all this, you know, in the retreats and whatnot, because especially in post-traumatic stress situations, the trigger will come in and the entire system thing will kick off all over again um, without the same trauma happening, not, phys not physically in their, you know, in their reality, but a memory kicks in and an emotional response kicks in and it triggers the whole physical the physio physiological response of, of high trauma. So that's, that's post-traumatic stress. And, you know, when that starts to happen, if you can recognise it and start to question, there's like a few, you know, like a few seconds where you can actually probably intervene when you start to get a little bit more practice um, and you can recognise the responses and then you can kind of bring yourself back from it. Um, but you've got some kind of awareness or knowledge that it might kick in. There's your I am, mm. your higher self, like, oh, it's happening, and, and it can kind of kick in and go, okay, how can we work with this now? Like, we, we yeah. can start, start to breathe, start to ground ourselves, start to feel yeah, like yeah. we're in our body. Yeah. yeah that kind of stuff. Earth calling yeah, you know, it, yeah, yeah. Just, just, you know, the understanding of that it's not actually physically happening is very powerful. When you actually understand the processes of your own body, knowledge is power. That kind of knowledge is powerful, very powerful. And, and this is why I talk about heal. So we do the healing process. Empower and educate kind of come hand in hand with each other. 
So knowing what's going on in your body, knowing what's going on in your mind, knowing the strategies to deal with it is empowering. That's the empowerment process. And, um, you know, we look at neurology, we look at physiology, we look at diet, we look at language, we look at lots of different aspects of how people respond to certain triggers and, you know, stimuli. Um, and, you know, the women are going away with all of this knowledge and having a completely different experience of life. So, you know, it's powerful. And then, you know, the connection, the final step is the connection um, with the community, you know, community of women that we're building, but also connecting back into themselves. Um, and, you know, starting to understand who they are, how they work, um, you know, how, how their mind works, how their emotions work, and, and how to have a level of um, cont control, if you like, but understanding um, more to the point. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And mm. it's, it's, it sounds so awesome. I'm, I'm just so thrilled with what you're doing. I just love that, it, you know, you're open to it growing and being everything it can be because we're all in this process of change along with it, aren't we? And Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean... Like even when I was like back in, um, I'm just trying to think back now, just 2003, that kind of time when I was doing the clinical counselling and, and specialising PTSD with people, the awareness, well, that's now going back 14 years, the awareness of just through movies, through education, it's so much yeah. has helped to, to evolve people's consciousness, right? Yeah. So sometimes they come in and they're so ready, you know, whereas back then it, you'd need to get them ready, get them ready, get them ready. And now it's like they're coming in and they're ready, more ready than yeah. they used to be for change, like to, to grab it by the balls and say, yes. Um, but I'm really I'm so curious as to where this is heading because we are, we are becoming more educated society and mm. on these issues and the therapeutic metho methodologies and mm. the services that are, I reckon they're going to ramp up. Jane, I really, I really do. Yeah, I think yeah. people like to start to become a reality, mm. um, but I, I also feel like you're in the right time because it's, it's definitely doing this. Yeah, you know what? One of the things that I found astounding when I started sort of um, looking at, uh, I'm looking at funding because the majority of the women that I work with have been very highly impacted financially. You know what it's like coming out of any relationship. You lose assets. You you know, especially if you've got kids as well, you become a one parent family and there's a lot of implications financially. Um, I'm looking at, you know, various ways of creating funding to subsidize women to come into the, into the retreats and, and do the work um, for, for a very, very low cost. But obviously, you know, I need to pay facilitators and there's a lot of, it's not a cheap process, let me put it that way. Um, I do work one-on-one, -on -one, which, you know, is, is very effective, but I'm only one person. There's certain people that I can refer to, but, you know, and that's growing, but, you know, for the time being, I'm looking at funding models. Um, what I've actually found absolutely astounding, looking at grants and things like that, there is no money going into recovery. None, none whatsoever. Um, it is being kind of, slowly looks at um but i think i'm at, i'm i'm in a place where i'm in a bit of a groundbreaking position in what i've actually put together um to create this healing process for women because you know women who are coming out coming out of these situations um once they pass that immediate crisis stage and and you know refuge and that that immediate kind of um that high need space, if you like. Once they're out and they're um, fending for themselves and they're trying to recreate their lives and become independent, there's no help. There's no help. And the phase of recovery is a long, it's a, it's a long, it's a longer period than, you know, removing someone from a violent situation and placing them to somewhere safe where they can, you know, it's, it's not as cut and dried and simple as, government you know organizations t attending to think that it is you know you, you kind of dumped out there <laughs> to fend for yourself carrying all of this trauma um 
very little resources, then without the ability to think rationally and function on that level because of the amount of stress that you go through, your frontal cortex shuts down as you, you would know. Um, you got, you know, all of your limitations with employment and, and work. Um, yeah, so that, that impact is massive. Um, and I'm astounded that I'm one of very few people, very, very few people working specifically in recovery from, you know, post-trauma, uh, specifically around domestic violence. So, yeah, I kind of just want to get that out there that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking to have uh, streams of income, uh, whether that be philanthropic or, um, you know, there, there's lots of different ways that, that I can uh, utilize my skills, I guess, my connections to create more, to create more for what I need to do. Because it's the biggest struggle for me has been the funding side of it and subsidizing the places for the women that are most in need. That there are women who can pay for, you know, the full cost of the retreats. Um, it is very good value for what you get, um, but it's out of reach for so many women still. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's great to set that intention, sweetheart, because the yeah. more people that are real with this, the more that they can, they can find, look, just, you know, I mean, even for the fact that they might be in a situation where maybe financially that's not an issue for them, like, to, to leave. Yeah. They, they need that ongoing help so then well then that could really help you if, if those people can come on board and, and then they can find ways to actually create meaning in their life to support totally yeah yeah other people as well so there may well there's, be there's many many ways to contribute you know several of the women that i've worked with have actually gone on to do practitioner training and want to come back and work within the programs you know that's happening already um you know others are creating ways to you know contribute financially they're you know donating um either product or time or you know there is you know several contribute money and pay for a place or you know there's lots of different ways everything you know everything counts um yeah absolutely and you know yeah. what um you're doing incredible things and um, the more support that you get, the more you can do and the more creative mm -hmm. ways you can do that. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm a big, big supporter and advocate of what you're doing, sweetheart. I really love mm -hmm. it. And just so that people know where to find you. Um, yes. And also, I know that there may be some things coming up that we might promote close to the time that this is airing, um, but um, just so that people can find you. Mm, yeah, it's um, www.life2project.com.au. Um, there's also the Inspiring Events website as well, or jane at life2project.com.au. Yeah, uh, so the number two, two, the numeral two. Yeah, yeah. 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 Life, yeah. Life, and through there, if you need, to, if you want to speak to me directly, you can. You know, my phone number's listed on there in various places. Connect with me on Facebook, Jane Slightly. Each. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, the Love Two Project has a Facebook page. It's probably more active than than the website because I don't do WordPress very well. <laughs> but put your energy where it's required. Yes. Then, uh, <laughs> I'm much more much more active on Facebook because it's very social kind of like and I like the interaction. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so there's you know, there's plenty of places to connect with me yeah. online. And and yeah, you'll you'll see you'll find my phone number on there if you need to connect with me. Send me a private message if you want to. Um, happy to chat if you know if there's any way that I can be of assistance to you, I can let you know when the next retreats are coming up. Um, there's where are one they as well, Jane. Just what we're about the location well, retreats. Kedron at the moment on the north side of Brisbane. I have been asked to go to Melbourne with it. Um, so that's going to be happening. Um, and there's a few other things in the pipeline that I can't really kind of reveal at the moment, but there's other things coming up as well. Yeah. So yeah. there's big, there's big, there's big things coming for 2017, which is really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, so, and I want I want this to be you know um, the movement that you know is needed. Absolutely, 
you know, because <laughs> people who need to go through a recovery process are playing small. They're living life day to day in survival mode mostly. Um, you know, not thinking beyond their means, not thinking and dreaming big. They're not, you know, they're not creating, they're not, um, they're not daring, they're not taking chances. They're very much in that survival mode and sticking to what they know. But once this healing process starts to take place and people start to, you know, expand themselves, they become more involved, they become more community focused, they become more globally focused, they become more creative, solution focused, and they get involved and they become active. That's you know, right. they're not just caught up in their own little world, just surviving day to day. And we create a much bigger, much more powerful community and movement. Absolutely. And That's also the, the, the bonus for, for them is that they get an awesome relationship with themselves and attract uh -huh. awesome yeah. relationships instead of being attracted to the same kind of relationship. Exactly. First place. So it's, yes, it's like really totally. you recreate your story, guys. And mm -hmm. you just get so much from it. And so invest in yourself and, and, um, and, be sure to check out what Jane's doing because the Life 2 Project is a phenomenal initiative. Thank you, Jane, so much for joining mm -hmm. us. It's been an absolute blessing to have you My on the show. My pleasure. Love you heaps, sweetheart. See you soon, hey?